because it's, it's not actually a gas, it's uh, quite a thick, heavy oil. It's developed in the 1950s during some pesticide research, actually, and they found some agents which were particularly toxic. I believe that nerve agents are some of the most dreadful chemicals that chemists have ever synthesised. The V stands for venomous agent. So this is venomous agent X and there was a venomous agent G and various other ones. Perhaps it was the uh, 22nd, 23rd one, wherever X is in the alphabet that they, they'd made or perhaps it just sounded sinister. Fortunately, there is an organisation based in The Hague, the Organisation for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, which over the last 20 or so years has succeeded in getting 95% of all the stocks of chemical weapons in the world to be destroyed. I've got a model here uh, of the VX agent. It's got a number of atoms, as you can see. This is a phosphorus based reagent, as a lot of these nerve agents are. So here we have a phosphorus. We've got a double bond to an oxygen. Uh, we've got an ethanol group here. The interesting group is this here, and this is derived uh, from taurine. This is a sulphur and in taurine that has more oxygens on it. In this case though it doesn't and this phosphorus to sulphur bond here is a very weak bond and that is the key part of this molecule which reacts when it meets your nervous system. I think that this chemical is obviously terribly dangerous even to store because if it gets out accidentally it could cause enormous damage, kill thousands or perhaps more people depending how it's distributed. So these are all called nerve agents uh, and that's because they interrupt your nervous system. So the normal neurotransmitter which is used in your nervous system uh, is this here. This is uh, acetylcholine. So the nerves work by sending an electrical signal from your brain to your muscles and when they get to the muscles there's a junction. The electrical message gets converted into a different type of message. A neurotransmitter, or many, many thousands of neurotransmitters are released, and they drift across the synaptic gap to the muscle, and they accumulate in receptors. And the more accumulation is, the more the stimulus for that particular muscle is. So your lungs, for example, are constantly being told to breathe in, breathe out. Your heart is constantly being told to, to beat and pump blood around you. And when you want to move your hand, your brain is telling the muscles here to contract or, or release. This neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, is responsible for much of that. There are other neurotransmitters too, but this is the, the key one for that process. So this, when it gets released, it soaks up into all the receptors. But of course, at some point, you want to release your hand or your heart wants to beat the other way. And so these go in and out of these receptors and then there's another molecule called acetylcholine esterase which just comes along and chomps them up. Um, I call it the Pac-Man molecule because you can imagine something coming along. And then it, it literally breaks this bond here uh, to make acetic acid, vinegar, and, and choline. And the choline gets recycled back uh, in the uh, cell ending, recreate more of the neurotransmitter. This is going on thousands of times a second. It's a very fast process. So how does VX work? Well, it works by mimicking this molecule here. So this molecule is the natural food, if you want, for Pac-Man. This molecule comes in, and this, again, is a very weak bond, and so it comes off, and this gets attached to the Pac-Man molecule. So the normal process would be that the serine residue would come in and attack the carbon of the acetylcholine to make this carbon-oxygen bond and then water can come in and pluck that off again and, and that happens many times a second. So this is always around to, to eat more, like a pair of scissors snipping all the acetate groups off. When we have the phosphorus to oxygen bond though, it's, it's on there for good. It's not coming off unless you administer an antidote. So what happens is, now that your acetylcholine in your, your synaptic gap in the nervous, in that junction, if you like, between the muscle and the nerve, that's not being eaten up. So it's always there. So it's always going into the receptors to tell your muscle 
to contract. And of course, you, you know, if it's your heart or if it's your, your lungs, well, that's very quickly gonna, gonna really mess up your normal uh, breathing uh, and, and living. Indeed, most people uh, who have this type of poisoning, um, they die of asphyxiation because their lungs have stopped working correctly. And of course, all your peripheral muscles are being told by the same substance what to do, so you, you will get uncontrolled movement convulsions, so really not very pleasant at all. The other very common one, which uh, nerve agent which people will have used, uh, or heard of at least, hopefully not used, is sarin. So VX is actually far more potent than even sarin. It's, it's extremely potent. So around about 10 milligrams, that's what, a hundredth of a, a gram, really not very much, really not very much, is enough to kill an average human. It has to be admitted that this video is the first opportunity that I've had of wearing this tie that was sent to me by a fan, anonymously, I don't know which fan, about chemical weapons. This is not the sort of tie that one can wear at a party. People are not going to enjoy themselves when they see vomiting, diarrhea and the likes written on my tie. But today it's really quite useful and appropriate. And I thank that fan, whoever he or she was, for sending it to me. This initially reacts with the phosphorus, the sulphur, to make uh, this bond here, and then this group migrates down here. And that happens at a fairly rapid process. So the idea was to have elemental sulphur, which is just a nice yellow powder, and this other substance, QL, and within the actual missile, those were called binary missiles or binary bombs, the chemical reaction would occur to make the very nasty nerve agent. And that, of course, made the bomb much easier to assemble.